Hi everyone, my name is Matt and I have a samurai problem. Well, I picked this little gem up yesterday from my friend Doug. Doug has a YouTube channel called uh, Trash Panda Off-Road. I'll post a link to that in the video description. Uh, Doug has owned this for, uh, I don't know, a year or two. And uh, when he bought it, it was not running. So it's not been running for quite some time. You know, from the outside, it looks largely stock. It uh, hasn't been molested. You know, every, all the uh, factory trim pieces are in place. Uh, the uh, underside's actually in great condition. Uh, you know, all the undercoating is still on the, uh, on the frame and everything. Paint's a little rough. It's got a couple scratches here and there, but the body is largely straight. Now here's what's unique about this thing. This has an Isuzu C223 uh, four-cylinder diesel engine in it. And then uh, someone's also swapped a turbo on there. It also has this uh, kind of unique rally top, which does an excellent job of turning a very small cargo space into an even smaller cargo space. Yeah, so what's my goal with this thing? Well, uh, I've got a kind of an overland exploration trip in South Central Oregon with a couple other Suzuki guys coming up in a couple of weeks. Actually, less than two weeks. And so I have my work cut out for me. I have to uh, get this thing running and reliable enough to take on some uh, off-road excursions here in just a couple of weeks. So let's dive into it, take a look, see what we need to do. Got some wasps that came with it. That's awesome, we'll have to kill those. Yeah, so here's our Is Isuzu diesel. Uh, it's mechanically injected uh, engine. The information that I got uh, I put this battery in here, by the way, just to make sure it would turn over. Uh, the information I got was that it needed a new starter uh, and that the previous owner, not Doug, but the guy before him, had hooked up the battery backwards by accident and melted some wiring. Other than that, it, uh, the information I got is, you know, that this thing ran just fine beforehand. Uh, it was also described as underpowered, which is not surprising. I think these engines make, you know, like 55 horsepower, so it's really no more power than the uh, than the stock Samurai engine is. This one, of course, has a turbo on it, but look at this thing. It's a little tiny itty-bitty sucker. I don't really know anything about it, but uh, man, that's small. Might be enough for this little 2.2. I don't really know. Uh, the manifold's definitely homemade. It's got a big piece of quarter-inch flat plate here. Now, it might surprise everyone to know, this is not my first diesel Samurai. Uh, I think uh, about 15 years ago I had a gold colored one. Maybe it's still floating around out there somewhere. But it, uh, um, I swapped five different engines into it in a two year period. <laughs> uh, they were all Volkswagen engines, all 1.6s. I had various build stages on them. Uh, the last couple were turbo diesels. I had uh, propane and water methanol injection and all sorts of uh, pump mods and everything else on it. So I'm not a stranger to diesel powered Samurais, but I don't know anything about these Isuzu C223s. These came in like the Isuzu Pup. Um, I don't know how many of them there are out there. Don't know how easy it is to get parts for them. Someone did some welding or grinding in the vicinity of this light and it's just peppered with rust particles. Gonna need some new headlights. Yeah, let's take a look at the inside of this thing. We've got some uh, switches and stuff here. But largely, the inside of the Samurai is unmolested. It's got like a, this is like a Scotch-Brite pad that's glued in here. That's pretty funny. Probably take that out of there. Uh, it's got a pyrometer in here. Um, I'll have to see if that's pre or post uh, turbo there. Actually, the stock seats look pretty good. The seat covers are a little wasted, but that's okay. Floorboards look fine. I don't see a lot of rust or anything. It's got a freaking sweet rampage stereo cassette deck that's awesome it's also got a cb in here a gun rack all right sweet got a spot for all my guns i think i've got the keys for these locks i think they came with it i actually kind of like this hitch you know the stock samurais have a like a piece of flat bar that kind of comes down here for the normal hitch this has a lot better ground clearance uh, and it looks really sturdy, quite a bit more so than the than the factory hitch. I, I actually really like this. <clears throat> Got a fire extinguisher. That's always handy. Got some carpet in here. Got a tow bar, factory jack. We have a turbo. 
brand new turbo, a much larger turbo. Huh. Uh, huh. Interesting. Got some speakers in here. Craco specials. Got some stinky undercoating. Probably gonna stir up a wasp nest again. Got some wiring. Interesting. Oh. Yeah, so that's kind of an overview of this thing. Got my work cut out for me if I expect to drive this thing out in the desert for, uh, you know, a week and a half from now. So let's, uh, let's back this trailer up over here, roll this thing off of here, and jump into it. See, this cable here goes to those winch lines I'm not going to be using. Holy cow. There's a lot of amperage there for some reason. Um, oh, there's smoke. Yikes. Ah, uh, it's that, uh, <coughs> uh, it's that uh, wire going to the alternator, this thing that was already smoked here. Really don't want to touch that, it's plenty hot. Now it looks like it's going from the starter down there to the alternator. Um, that's the charge wire, so I guess I'll just disconnect that for now. And uh, yeah, we'll just run it without an alternator. We got a Coast Guard helicopter just flew directly overhead. 400 feet above my house here. Clearly something shorted out in the alternator, but this was going to have to go anyway. I'm just going to clip it off here so I'm not worried about it. There we go. This goes in the garbage. All right. Our arcing and sparking is gone. Well, I can hear a uh, I can hear a fuel pump running. Like under the back seat there. Nothing. I can obviously I can hear a solenoid clicking up there. I don't even know what these buttons do. Uh, that's a different sound. It's like two button or two solenoids clicking or something. This one says starter, and it's got a yellow wire that goes all the way down to the starter. This one here says glow plug switch. And that goes to the glow plugs. When I turn the key, I'm not getting any power through this solenoid right here to the starter. So the starter itself isn't getting anything. But the solenoid is clicking, and there is power on this side of it. So, yeah, I don't know what the deal is. I, this must have failed somehow. These are really cheap. I probably even have one in my shop somewhere. Uh, they're like 15 bucks. So, but in the meantime, I'm going to try jumping across it. All it's doing is passing current to the solenoid side of the starter down there. So... Should be able to jump around it here. Oh, I should make sure the transmission's in neutral. It is. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh man, that sounds good. That is promising. Should probably check the oil first. Black as night. But it's above the full mark. Doesn't smell like diesel fuel or anything. Well, like I said, it's been sitting for a couple years. Good possibility there's some air in the lines, but uh, like I said, I can hear the lift pump running in the back. And diesel doesn't go bad like gas does. I mean, it'll last several years, so. I think we're going to spend a couple minutes and just crank this thing over and uh, see if we can get it to light off at all.
I don't know how much more this battery's got in it. I'm gonna throw my charger on it. I could definitely hear it was turning over slower and slower. cylinders I don't see any leaks or anything well check my lights here while this thing's idling you have lights. <laughs> Feel the crap coming out of the vents. Probably a big mouse nest down there in the heater core. I've had this thing going for a few minutes here. I'm a, I am concerned about this reservoir. Uh, this is a pressurized reservoir, the way that this works. And uh, it's on the downstream side of the overflow cap. It's not just an overflow bottle. I'm definitely gonna have to do something about this. And for some reason, this uh, this has got a cap on it. It should have that. This should be like an overflow hose that goes down somewhere. And I need to figure out what the deal is with the alternator. I guess I'll go do some looking and see if those alternators are even available. Clearly it's got some bad diodes in it. Um, I'll probably take, pull it out of there, take it apart, and see if I can replace those diodes. Yeah, this, this heater hose are hot. It's circulating coolant. Not seeing any leaks or hearing any noises that really concern me. Well, I pulled the alternator out of its hole. Here it is here. And wouldn't you know it, this is not an Isuzu alternator. This is a standard Delco uh, 10SI or 12SI. And as luck would have it, I have one. Didn't even have to go buy one. I remember when I bought this, I swapped it out of an old uh, Samurai that I used to have. Um, I put a PowerMaster 200 amp alternator in there and built a welder setup. And, uh, yeah, this is just a stock one, but um, I think it might be clocked differently in the back, but it really doesn't matter. I could change that if I needed to, but... Well, I didn't set up the camera for it, but I got the new alternator on here. Everything all wired up. Get rid of all the melted wires and stuff in there. So this should work. I haven't tried it out yet. A uh, new solenoid showed up today, so I'm going to change this out. And that should allow me to start the Samurai with the key from inside instead of doing the jumper thing out here. Now I've already disconnected the battery so you guys aren't in for any uh, fireworks show here. One of my frustrations with uh, swaps like this is you get the high diversity equity and inclusion score on fasteners. It means there's fasteners of different sizes, lengths, shapes, and measurement standards all over the whole thing. And you never really know what you're dealing with. Ah, let's drop that washer. All our new starter relays installed. Get the battery hooked back up. Oh, off camera, I also swapped out that uh, galvanized steel T that was in there for this uh, plastic actual heater hose connection. 
I'm definitely worried about this Volkswagen pressurized reservoir. That is going to be an issue. That's going to be high on my priority list. But I haven't test driven this thing yet, so well, before I start it, I'm going to take a voltage reading on the battery and then make sure our new alternator is working. Let's do that real quick. Oh, I got junk everywhere now. All right, we're at about 12.7 volts right now. Start this thing up. See if she starts with a key, and if it does, then we'll check that voltage. Nice. No glow plugs needed, even. We expect it to be a little lower at first, just because of the cranking power that was needed. But. Sweet, that's taken care of most of the issues I wanted to address, like immediate issues. This thing's ready for a test drive. I'll wait for a gap in the traffic on the highway here just in case it can't get her up to speed and then I got a spot to pull out up here just in case things are not going good. Actually, this thing's surprisingly good. I really wasn't expecting too much out of it, but... I'm able to rip around a speedometer says 65. I guess I need to verify that, but. All right, I got about 15 miles of driving down. Really, no problems. Uh, it's a little slow to get up to highway speed, but uh, it'll do it. I'm about, about to head up David Douglas here on Highway 26. This is about as steep as it gets out here, so we'll see how she handles the grade. I got it pinned in fifth gear. Losing a little bit of speed. Probably grab fourth. I did verify the speedometer earlier with the uh, GPS and it's pretty much right on. So, hey, we're holding 60 miles an hour up the grade. About 1100 degrees EGT, so that's getting up there a little. Not bad though, boy. Better than I was expecting. Well, I think I'm going to wrap this video up here. It's uh, late at night. I drove the Samurai probably 100 miles. We didn't have any problems with it, and it uh, actually performed better than I thought it would. So. <clears throat> I've got a few things I definitely need to address on it. I need to change the headlights, they're super dim. Uh, so I'm gonna find something. So they're just seven inch round sealed beams, should be pretty easy. Uh, that pressurized coolant reservoir is just, uh, that's, a, that's a, something that's waiting to pop and leave me stranded somewhere. So I'm gonna have to probably build something for that. I already checked all the lights, all those work just fine. I'm gonna buy a couple of new lenses. And uh, you know, the rest of the stuff I'm gonna do is pretty much just clean up and maintenance. Uh, fluid and filter changes and I'm gonna try and get some kind of stereo in there maybe something like that I did spend a couple of hours today um, I, I spent a little bit of time with a buffer on the hood uh, it's not perfect but it's better than it was I also cleaned out the interior pretty good so it's not all stinky and full of debris anymore and then uh, I did paint the cargo area in the back here and I got the cargo area light working so uh, the gun rack has uh, holders for an axe and a shovel, so I'm going to get a short shovel and throw that on there. Really though, I am pleased with how this thing's coming along. Really, it turned out to be, I, I was worried I was getting into a can of worms. I probably still am, but but it's not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. This thing's been sitting for five or six hours. It's kind of cool out tonight. Let's go ahead and start it up cold and see how easy it starts. Give it a couple seconds of glow plugs here. Maybe six or seven seconds. Watch, she fires right up. 
oil pressure light goes out. Battery and the sensor light go right out once the alternator starts charging. Really doesn't smoke very much at all. Engine seems like it's nice and tight. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Uh, stay tuned because I'm probably gonna make another one before I go on the trip, and then of course I'll bring the cameras along for the trip too. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you guys on the next one.